Hi, my name is Sherry, and this is my diary of my experience with a hip replacement. I went through 10 years of chronic hip pain. I tried everything, anti-inflammatories, physical therapy, MRIs, x-rays, ice, heat, chiropractors, massage, acupuncture, rest, exercise, lasers, orthotics, foam rollers, sleeping on my back, cupping, acupressure, changing my diet, getting a new bed, trigger release work, CBD oil, and finally cortisone shots. When the cortisone shots no longer worked, my doctors decided that the hip replacement was probably the last thing we could try. It got to the point where sleeping was very uncomfortable and for extended periods of walking, the pain was so bad, I had to be in a wheelchair. Here I am with my 87-year-old mom and me, age 63, in the same condition. I'll put a timeline and notes down in the description section under the video so you can jump ahead to different sections if needed. This story is absolutely not medical advice. This is strictly my personal journey and experience. Everyone recovers at a different rate. In fact, I had friends up and walking without a cane the next day while it took me almost two weeks to walk unassisted. I was never bone on bone, so the doctors kept avoiding a hip replacement for me. I was eventually diagnosed as having hip dysplasia, that is, born with an abnormal hip joint. But as it was never diagnosed or corrected at a young age, over the years it caused constant inflammation and repeated labral tears from the muscle and tendon overuse and eventually helped to irritate the osteoarthritis. So my theory is that because I had this muscle tendon abnormalities after a decade of dysfunction and overuse, that made my recovery a bit different than someone with typical aging joint deterioration. Once the doctors put you on the list for your hip replacement surgery, they'll schedule you to attend a hip replacement class. And that's with a group of people and um, it's, it's about an hour and a half class and they'll go over everything you need to know about getting ready for your surgery and recovery. They will talk about um, enhanced recovery methods, um, do's and don'ts, things that'll help you recover faster, uh, a little bit about you know living with it and some of the tools and things you'll need. They go over actually you know, what the surgery is all about. <clears throat> they'll talk to you about crutches, walk, walkers and canes, and they'll, uh, they even passed out a little handout that said whether or not you, your insurance covered any of your equipment and where you could go if not. And, <clears throat> and they talked a little bit about physical therapy and you know what's gonna be involved in that, emergency numbers, and just any basic overall questions you might have. And then they sent you home with this handy dandy little breathing apparatus to practice to get your lungs in shape before and after the surgery. They'll give you a list of medical equipment they recommend you have ready for when you return from surgery. We found a place in our neighborhood where you could actually borrow it for free. We got the shower chair, which was very handy, and a walker and a cane. I did not get a toilet riser, uh, which you can purchase, and did not get a sock grabber, which would have been very handy because I had difficulty for months getting my socks and shoes on. Now it's the big exciting day of surgery. Wake up early, drink a carb beverage beforehand, get to the hospital, get checked in, and hopefully within a few hours you're checked out, heading home with your brand new titanium hip. Before you leave the hospital, they'll give you a list of medications they recommend you pick up from the pharmacy. Uh, Tylenol for pain, aspirin to prevent blood clots. For me, they prescribe meloxicam for inflammation and then famotidine, an antacid to offset the potential side effects from the meloxicam. They'll give you some other strain, uh, stronger pain medications, which you may or may not need, and some laxatives to offset potential constipation from the surgery and medications. I ended up taking the laxatives for about the first week and the pain meds for almost two weeks. So. Really, Simon? Okay. Come on. Come on. They also sent home a couple of nice big ice packs 
to go over your leg, kind of wrap around your leg. And I've been using these very consistently several times a day for the couple weeks. My husband put together a little to-go box for me so I could move from room to room and have everything that I needed with me, water bottle, eyeglasses, eye drops, uh, medications, a notepad. That was pretty handy. The day after surgery, a physical therapist comes to the home and helps you with some very basic exercises. Of course, your treatment plan is going to depend on whether you have the anterior or posterior surgery. They are quite different in the exercise and aftercare. Um, she comes about twice a week, and then after, the, after two weeks, I start going to Kaiser for outpatient physical therapy. It should prevent blood clotting and get some movement in there. You're supposed to do this at least three times a day, but as often as possible. And then the second exercise is tightening your quads, which is actually harder than it sounds because it really hurts on this leg. Pushing your knee down? The back yeah, so of your you're knee kind down. of pushing your knee down and tightening your quads. Try to do that 10 times. It's really hard because this one hurts. And then the third exercise is tightening your butt, which is really hard because I can't even tighten the right butt because it's so numb and tingly. And Maybe we need to stiff. massage it more. So just massage. tightening the right butt. And then... Slide your heel. Oh yeah, and then the heel slide like this. Mm -hmm. But I can't even do it with the right leg because okay. it's so hard. So what I have to do instead is take a strap. But then I can't get it on, so my husband has to put my strap on. And then I can slowly pull it up. And oh, it's so tight and so painful. Oh. Are you doing all strap or are you using muscles? No, this is all strap. What the first, the first time, and she said if to, that eventually you'll get muscle memory, and it'll start loosening up. But in the beginning, it's all strap. I also use the strap to help me get back up into bed. You know, my muscles were so damaged and um, deteriorated over the ten years of pain. So. Other people don't necessarily have the slow progression of recuperation that I seem to have. The physical therapist also set up the pillows for me, showing me how I should sleep, what kind of elevation, and to make sure I put ice packs on my legs as much as possible. Can't you go up higher? Can't lift it. So the 
this on. Oh. And again, it's going to be muscle memory until it's better. I'm not lifting it up. the knee up here. Like this. Here. You're just bending the knee. Oh, it just doesn't want to go. Okay. 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 Harry, one week after total hip replacement. Look at that. Here it is, a week and five days after her surgery. She's trying to walk heel toe. She's not taking any pain meds. It's a little bit painful, like a little but painful in here, yeah. a little tight, but that's the muscle. She's always had a little problem. The other way, walk away from me. You can really see the hips from here. Yeah, it's just super tight. I mean, the entire quad is like it's almost like a tight spasm, so it's hard to uh, walk. When you walk, you lean a little bit. You just started doing it, just heel toe, bend the knee, heel toe, bend the knee. knee pain too or is mostly anterior hip? I did not have Before. a lot of knee pain when I, it kind of hurts when it gets up here. I had knee, some knee pain when I started walking on the cane, but I iced it for Here. 
careful going up. Coming up here. Wow. Wow. Just got back from the therapist and she just about fell right there. He says, why, why are you using the walker? Wow. You didn't walk this good before the surgery, Sherry. You did not walk this good. You did not. Except for like, the, you know, 10 seconds where you'd say, look, I'm gonna walk normal. This is a good leg. That's a lot better. Can't quite get it all the way up without the strap. Ow. It's a little painful. So with the strap, I can get it all the way up. That's <laughs> so, gonna be the video. So I can get full extension. So I'm still working on the muscle memory and the full extension. But without the strap, and that's really painful right here. I still need to do work on that one. And he wants, this is when he added on to do a leg lift like this. way better than you were doing. Right. High steps on the walking. Yeah, you're swinging your hip forward now. Because a big step, see? You never walked like that before, Sherry. So if you do the massage now, it's like still numb here. Still a little numb here. Numb there, that was normal there. Feels like a bruise back here. Numb there, normal there. Feels like a bruise here. He said to go ahead and massage right on the wound. Freaks me out. Going on, Sherry. What are you doing? You're walking. You're walking away from the house without a car. Is this your first walk down the block since your operation? Ooh, it's cold. Ooh. It's cold today. Look 
and, and we're on lockdown. Oh, we're on lockdown. Look, look at that. Isolated streets. Look at the walking. Unbelievable. Huh? And look, look at the beautiful sky. Pretty nice. So today is my four month anniversary from my surgery, exactly today. So I just wanted to show you my progress. This is my normal leg. And this is my replacement. So it's getting stronger. And uh, this movement is there. It's a little tight in here. I still have a little bit of numb, numb, numbing. The hardest thing for me is probably still getting on my shoes. I can't quite reach right there. Here I can reach. Here I can't. I can kind of turn it and sort of get my shoes on and my laces at an angle like that, which is better than it was, but it's getting there. <laughs> I also wanted to show you the scar at four months. So it's under the shorts line, so you don't see it when you're wearing a pair of shorts, but it is below the bikini line. And um, so if you're wearing a traditional bikini, it does show but it's not too bad. It's um, starting to fade. It's still a little lumpy with scar tissue underneath, um, but you can massage it to try to break up the scar tissue. And um, there you go. As my daughter said, scars are cool, so it's okay. Okay, so to the flexibility is pretty good. I mean, this is my normal leg, right? So to put on my shoe and all that, I can pull it up. This leg is still a little tender, but it's gotten much better. It's um, to be able to get your shoe on. I can pretty much tie it, tie it pretty good, a little bit at an angle. But um, the flexibility, I mean, this one I can bend, and this one, it's getting there. So the flexibility is almost there. As far as standing, <laughs> okay, without assistance, without assistance. With assistance. With assistance. Going downstairs, no pain. Going upstairs, no pain. Haven't tried running, but walking, no pain. I'm gonna walk down the hall. I'll walk. No pain. So that's about it. Here I am at one year. Yeah, just a quick glance and I'm doing great. Able to walk, swim, bike, sleep with no pain. And uh, still need to work, do some yoga, get some full extension, but Really appreciate everything. This was a team effort. Doctors, nurses, physical therapists, family and friends couldn't have done it without you. Hope this video helped. Bye-bye.